Okay, so who are you and what do you do? I'm James McNally and I do acting, do a bit of writing and directing at Franklin College. Cool. Um, do you remember your favourite performance on stage and can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, my favourite performance was last year. I was in a production of West Side Story in Louth and uh, I got to play Arab, one of the um, well, one of the Jets, um, just a, a gang of boys um, growing up in New York and they, they fight the Sharks who are just a, a different gang. But the, um, it's very like, the role is very like camaraderie sort of um all the gang like work together and they're all they all sort of like punch each other have like a joke yeah, and yeah. Oh, it was so fun and like there was like just massive like um sort of dance breaks that were kind of like fight scenes yeah, with yeah. the other um the other gang and we got to do some just really fun stuff just with like incorporating like fighting with these like dance breaks and there was a there's one, one song in it that every like everyone remembers and it was Officer Kropke um, and what, what that song is is uh, the, the one policeman that always like tells us off is Officer Kropke and we have a bit where we um, take the piss out of him essentially we pass around this um, rolled up newspaper and start hitting each other over <laughs> the head being like hey you and uh, pretending to be Officer Kropke and we just take the piss out of him and like the whole thing is about how uh, we're hoodlums and uh, we got told to Go get an education. No, education is not a problem. Go get a job. No, getting a job isn't the problem. You're mentally deranged. Put him in a prison. He can't go into prison. He needs help. And like, we just go in this yeah, big yeah. circle. Oh, and it's such a fun song to do. Yeah. Uh, so is that, did you say that was with Blaze? Yeah, that was Blaze. Yeah, um, cool. Blaze musical theatre group. Oh, it was so fun. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> Earlier, before we started rolling, you started talking about how um, actors that enjoy being on camera want to do theatre and actors that uh, do a lot of theatre want to be on camera so yeah. is there any, can you expand on that a bit and like what, what do you prefer doing? Well um, I, I've been on stage, I've, I've rarely been on camera, I, I've been on it a bit more at college when I had to do media work and mm -hmm. film work but um, it's just like a, a weird thing that I've heard from all actors, even like famous actors have said this themselves, like I think Ian McKellen has said, yeah. said this himself about um, Every, everyone who is on the stage has been on stage for so long that like they, they get used to that sort of acting and they want to know what being acting on camera is like or they, they have acted on camera before but not as much as stage and they want to they want they want to do the other thing more and the same with people on camera is that they feel like they could branch out to stage work and they could work more on stage and I, I just I think it's that, that creative um, sort of <coughs> actors and people just want to do the other thing more than not what they're doing. They yeah. want to be something more than just this stage actor or just this one dimensional yeah. kind of yeah. That makes sense. So what kind of roles do you enjoy taking on and would you say it's easy being an actor in, um, in Grimsby? In Grimsby? Um, well I, I like taking on roles that are like uh, f fun roles to do. I like comedy. I like doing comedy a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so like recently for one of my um, a level roles. I did a uh, character called Charles from Bly, from a play called Bly Spirits, and it's very like he's very posh, aristocrat. It speaks an happy accent, and cool. He is. Um, it, it was. It, it's all like a farcical comedy, so it's very fun. You get to do it like big, over the top, and I, I like making an audience laugh. Yeah, because you know I'm an actor. I'm very. Um, it's me. It's yeah. all about me. So. <laughs> it's your <laughs> um, yeah, well that, that's why people go into acting, because yeah. like, they're a bit like, watch me, talk about me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, I enjoy those roles the most just because I, I just love making an audience laugh. Yeah. And I love, uh, and it, there's just so much more fun. It's so much more fun than drama, like being like re rehearsal process, just mm -hmm. having that like fun experience with the other actors and everything. Yeah. But um, being in Grimsby, uh, I've only really experienced like two sorts of acting. It's either musical theatre or like the heavy drama. That was at, um, the, the drama was at class act and musical theatre at plays. Yeah. And uh, it's, they're, they're very like, they, they, they try to act like they're professional, but they're, they're youth groups. They're not very like, you don't really get a sense of 
how an actor should be or what what you should be doing as an actor. And I've um, every, everyone that I know who is an actor in Grimsby, I, I've gotten to drama schools. Yeah, there's a weirdly high su success rate for. Um, actors in Grimsby getting into drama schools and getting out of Grimsby um, because like in, in smaller areas like Grimsby and other places yeah. there's a weirdly weird amount of like creatives who just want to go and make something and be something because we're kind of stuck in this small town with like no like real like culture for something like theatre or anything yeah like like with blaze uh we don't blaze doesn't do any shows in grimsby we go to louth to do it because yeah, there's a, yeah. a bigger population in louth who want to go see the plays whereas if we do them in grimsby we're earning nothing because no one wants to go see a play in grimsby and um so yeah it's kind of like hard to get a sense of like what act what an actor should be or is this like what acting is but um yeah, you just everyone that is an actor in Grimsby and wants to be an actor have gotten out and they've got and they can do it. It's possible, yeah. very possible. Like a lot, lots of people in my year have managed to get into drama schools this year. So yeah, it's just nice, nice to see that happening. But yeah, it's possible. It's yeah, not, like completely out of the question to be an actor in Grimsby. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lucas kind of touched on a similar thing when we spoke. Um, and he said how, uh, he, he kind of said uh, with what you said, how there isn't much of a culture for it here, but it's, I don't know, like a lot of act people who want to become actors, a lot of aspiring actors do kind of live here and come from here, and it's quite mm. strange. Have you kind of found that? Yeah, um, I've, I've never said a bit, like um, like being a class act, mm -hmm. uh, we've had like the years before us, um, like all the older people, they've all gone off and either they, they've quit class act because they've just like, they were just doing Not it as growing. a youth group, or yeah. they quit class act because they got into like a drama school in London, or they've got out of Grimsby to do more acting yeah. and more like professional places. Um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I mentioned how, despite the fact that there's not much of a culture for it here, we're still, mm. we have quite a lot of aspiring actors living in the town. I think, yeah, well, yeah, that's uh, that's because of like, we're, we're deprived of it, you know? Yeah. Um, we're deprived of that, um, that culture, that uh, outlet for creativity. Yeah. So you notice from, a lot, a lot of people from smaller towns tend to be like more, more creative than people from like like bigger towns in London and everything. Like in in London, like everyone, every, every kid thinks they're an actor or everything. Everyone thinks they're creative in London. But yeah, you can, the people who are genuinely more like creative, forward thinkers, like they're, they're they're the ones who have been so deprived of it that they seek outlets for this. They seek like film clubs or drama clubs or something to inspire them to to make these things yeah. and you get more filmmakers, more like people who want to do radio, people who want to do acting, film, uh, drama, like anything mm -hmm. from smaller towns because we just don't have it and we yeah. want to experience it. We want to be more than just Groomsby. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's pretty nailed on. <laughs> that was nearly the name of the channel. Uh, what did you want to do as a child and what do you want to do now? Yeah. Um, <laughs> As a kid, um, like when I was like really young, every time someone goes, "Oh, what do you want to do when you're older?" It was about like when I was like four to six. I would always, I would scream, "Action man!" and I would <laughs> run around the house just like kicking shit over, Brilliant. and uh, like jumping on the sofas and everything. Because as a kid, I was just like off the fucking walls, just everywhere. And uh, now uh, I want to go and do um, do stunt doubling and do. Uh, I've, I've, I'm doing stage combat in uni. I oh, got into wow. East 15, and I'm gonna go and do. Um, I'm gonna do a foundation course there, and then I'm going to hopefully get onto the oh, stage cool. combat course to do um, combat in um, in stage and in film and TV. And they also do a bit of mocap, which is fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so uh, as a kid, I would run around being like, I'm gonna be action man. And now I. Act I'm actually going to be action man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny though. That, yeah. that, that's nice though. Nice mirror image. Mm. But like, I didn't. I didn't figure out that's what I wanted to do until about last year. Yeah. Um, 
because I didn't know that course existed until my friend uh, went to do an audition at East 15 and came back and was like, oh, this is course, that is perfect for you. Huh. And I, like, I read into it more and I was just like, yeah, I guess, guess I'm doing that then. I guess yeah. I'm not staying in Grimsby for another year. Did you kind of, what, what was your plan before that then? Did you have one or were you just kind of no. going down a bit dead by then? Yeah, I was kind of just like, Winging trying, to, trying to work it out, just being like, right, well, like, I'm 18, 17, like, a whole life like yeah. I don't need to decide this now um, but yeah when I found that out I was kind of just like right well yeah I, I want to do that that's what I'm gonna do and uh, I did a really stupid thing by only applying to that one drama school yeah. <laughs> because uh, drag drama school is notoriously hard to get into yeah because you could just you can not get into a drama school just by like showing up on a day where someone, whoever's interviewing you is just miserable and then just doesn't let you in or they've already let too many people in mm -hmm. or they've already, like, like for me, like, they could have already let in too many white, black haired, six foot yeah. males because yeah. like obviously they still need to cast their plays so Variety they Yeah, they, yeah. Can't ca they can't let in everyone who looks the same otherwise they're kind of stuck when it comes to casting their own plays but um yeah, I did a really dumb thing by going, saying I want to do this one course at this one school and only auditioning for that one course in that one school and thank god I got in, <laughs> otherwise I would have been in Grimsby for another year yeah. applying for the same thing again next year. But like, all of my other friends, have like they were, they were going all over the country applying to all, over, all different schools and I was just like, nope, one. Just, just the one. <laughs> <laughs> just, just the one course, actually. So, uh, obviously you've dabbled a bit into writing. Um, You've written a script for a short film, or is it a short film? Yeah, Something. short. Yeah. Mockumentary. Um, so do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because I think that was a really cool idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, th this has been like the one thing that I've always, I've always struggled to kind of explain to people because it's sort of like, it's a niche joke. Yeah. But, um, it's, a, it's a mockumentary that I started writing because um, I, I don't drink tea. And I get a lot of flack for not drinking tea from British people who are just like, I'm inherently, it's a British thing to drink tea. And if you don't drink tea, you're not British. <laughs> How can you not drink tea? Tea! And um, so <laughs> I wrote this mockumentary. It originally started as um, like sort of like a, a mockumentary about a, like a group of people who don't um, drink tea and they talk about the stories about being bullied about not drinking tea and about halfway through it was supposed to be that because of um, the Brexit deal um, tea tariffs become too high and it becomes illegal to import tea into the UK yeah. and there's a big like outrage and like like people go like mental over the fact that yeah, yeah. And, and start blaming these people but um, as like I, as I kept writing it it turned into me and my friend Max um, going around Franklin College um, investigating an incident of one boy named Tetley who has killed himself over the fact that he gets bullied so much for being called Tetley but not drinking tea and be living in England and not drinking tea and not being yeah. British enough to drink tea and everything and um, so we had this sort of like American vandal sort of idea to go around um, interviewing his friends, his family, the staff members of the college, uh, and the people like supposedly bullied him, trying to figure out like um, like who who is responsible for bullying him so much that like, he killed himself over tea, and like it's all it's all a bit ridiculous. Like we've got like scenes where we have like tea tea totals anonymous meetings of people <laughs> who people who don't drink tea who sit around a circle all telling the stories about not drinking tea. My favourite thing about it is the fact that it is called Teetotal. Like, yeah. greatest pun I've ever made in my life. 